Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Before we get into the main subject for today, just a couple of items I want to cover first. The first of these items is to plug my music channel that I started for fun, original songs, one song up there right now, second one in the pipeline, more to come in the future. I put a link in the description below. Just want to let everybody know it's under my middle name, Gene Allen, instead of Gene Schwimmer. No connection with this vlog, no link back to this vlog. So you can share it with anybody you want. Nobody looking for my music is going to stumble on a political vlog, this vlog. So don't have to worry about that. Second item is a subject that I covered before. This is going back a little bit, but do you remember the McCloskeys? They were uh, husband and wife lawyers stood in front of their house with guns to ward off Black Lives Matter protesters who had trespassed on their property. I thought this was all done, all over with, but Here's the headline. Prosecutors drop trespassing charges against BLM, Black Lives Matter crowd, indict McCloskey's. St. Louis lawyer Mark McCloskey decried a grand jury's decision to indict him and his wife after the city declined to prosecute members of a Black Lives Matter crowd accused of trespassing on the couple's property. On Tuesday, McCloskey and his wife were indicted on charges of exhibiting guns and tampering with evidence in connection to a June protest in which the couple confronted Black Lives Matter protesters on their property. Quote, what we're witnessing here in this case is just an opportunity for the government, the leftist Democrat government of the city of St. Louis to persecute us for doing no more than exercising our Second Amendment rights, unquote, McCloskey said in a press conference after the indictment. McCloskey said he and his wife could now face serious consequences for the altercation, while those on the other side will not be charged. Quote, we're charged with felonies that could cost us four years of our lives and our law license, unquote, he said. That is just outrageous. And now on to the main subject for today, which is to highlight one of the traits I most admire, most like in Donald Trump. It's exemplified in this editorial from the Wall Street Journal, Pelosi's taxpayer ransom demand. President Trump decided Tuesday to walk away from talks on another coronavirus spending blowout until after the election. And that's the best decision for the economy and taxpayers. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Democrats refused to accept anything below $2 trillion, and their political ransom demand is what blew up the deal. Mrs. Pelosi's biggest demand was for $400 billion for states, cities, and tribal lands. This is a bailout for Illinois, New York, California, and other Democratic states that refuse to adjust their budgets to post-COVID realities. It is an income redistribution play from Florida and Texas taxpayers to blue state public union pensions. She also insisted on at least $500 a week in enhanced jobless benefits, which means millions of Americans would earn more by not returning to work. The relief debate now moves to the election campaign, and Republicans should educate voters about Mrs. Pelosi's political extortion play. Her swing district members, many of them freshmen, will now return to their districts with nothing to boast about. They're merely cogs in the Pelosi machine, and voters should know the real reason the relief talks failed. Ditto. Amen. But what I want to talk about mainly today, what I admire most or one of the things I admire most about Trump, and that is probably because of his business background, his willingness to get up and walk away, not to sit there and negotiate. He said in the past that he doesn't believe that the Democrats are serious, the House Democrats or Nancy Pelosi, 
uh, specifically about negotiating a COVID relief bill. They are just not serious in his view. And he walked away. He just said, if you don't want to discuss seriously, I'm walking away. He got up and walked away. Now Nancy Pelosi is sitting there with egg on her face. But he did say he did throw out a, an olive branch that he will, as he's been willing to do all along, sign on to specific items. For instance, $400 a week, but not $500 a week, but $400 a week in supplemental employment or unemployment benefits. In other words, to help people get by, but not to create an incentive not to go back to work, which gives me an opportunity for a little aside here where I live in Tennessee, right outside of Memphis, I see help wanted signs all over the place. There is work if you are willing to work, but if you're getting paid more than you would make from working, then you're not gonna go to work. So I am with the president on that and his willingness to, uh, I guess another $1,200 just flat out single check to people, even though I didn't get one, I guess I'm not eligible. I never followed it up because I don't really need the money and. I felt it would be wrong to take it, but and maybe I won't turn it down if I get it. I didn't get it last time, but his willingness to walk away. It reminds me of Reagan at Reykjavik when he was meeting with Gorbachev and they were talking about a disarmament treaty and Gorbachev had agreed, agreed, agreed. It went all the way through the talks and at the very end, Gorbachev said, there's just one little thing that I need and that's for you to abandon your anti-missile defense program, so-called Star Wars. Reagan said, sorry, no can do. Uh, Gorbachev insisted there was an impasse. Reagan got up and walked out. Ultimate result, the Soviet Union. Well, Reagan knew too that the Soviet Union could not keep up with the financial burden that they would bear to keep up with Reagan to counter his anti-missile defense with their own anti-missile defense. It led to the bankruptcy of the Soviet Union and ultimately the collapse of the Soviet Union, all because Reagan was willing to get up and walk out. I see the same thing in Trump that if somebody's not negotiating seriously with them, it's from his business days. And I think maybe Reagan, in his case, he was head of the Screen Actors Guild for a while. So he was involved in negotiations on behalf of the uh, Screen Actors Guild with all the movie production companies. So maybe it was the same with him used to negotiating and realizing that when you reach an impasse, you just get up and walk out. In Reagan's case, it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. I'm not quite as sanguine that Trump walking out will lead to the collapse of the Democratic Party, but I can dream, can't I? And I can also dream that you'll give me a thumbs up if you like this vlog, share it with anybody you think would also like it. If you have any comments, comment section below the vlog right above where you're, no, it's right below where you can get the link to my music channel. You could also ask questions, suggest future topics. You could subscribe. I love getting subscribers. But most of all, thank you very much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. I would like to see all of you again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye. <music>